Daniel Caustic presents Premiership Elections in Albertan History. This election took place on August 30th, 1971, and was the 17th election in the province's history. At the start of the term, social credit had been in power for a consecutive 33 years. This was in large part due to the overwhelming popularity of Ernest Manning, who had led the party to victory through the last seven elections. However, a shift of change was brewing worldwide and challenging the old order of which social credit found itself a part of. The anti-Vietnam War sentiment was about to result in the ousting of President Johnson, and a storm was brewing in France that would lead to the May 68 protests. At home in Alberta, similar tides of change were continuing to brew. Having been emboldened by the results of 1967, the opposition parties were continuing to build support. In 1968, after serving in office for over 25 years, Manning announced that he would be resigning as premier once a successor was named. Manning would go on to found a consulting firm and was appointed to the Canadian Senate in 1970. He served as senator until 1983 when he retired and died in Calgary in 1996 at the age of 87. He has a high school and business park road named after him in Calgary, along with the town of Manning in northern Alberta. In 1993, the provincial riding of Edmonton Manning would be created in his honor, and a federal riding of the same name would come in 2013. His son Preston would also enter public life, founding the Federal Reform Party and becoming leader of the official opposition in the House of Commons. To this day, Ernest Manning remains the longest-serving premier in Albertan history. In the wake of Manning's retirement, and in an effort to renew interest in the party, Social Credit announced that it would be holding a leadership race to replace him as party leader. As Social Credit was the largest party in the legislature, the new leader would also become the next premier. It would also be the first race of its kind in the party's history. Anders Alborg, provincial treasurer, minister of telephones, and MLA for Alexandra, was initially seen as the natural heir to Manning, but he stepped aside due to his poor health. During the race, six candidates would step forward. Walter Buck, MLA for Cloverbar, Edgar Gerhardt, minister of municipal affairs, and MLA for Edmonton. To Northwest, Alfred Hook, Minister for Lands and Forests, and MLA for Rocky Mountain House, Raymond Ryerson, Minister of Education and Labor, and MLA for St. Paul, Harry Strom, Minister of Agriculture, and MLA for Cyprus, and Gordon Taylor, Minister of Highways, and MLA for Drumheller Gleachin. While all candidates would stand out in various ways, the two that shone brightest were Harry Strom and Gordon Taylor. Taylor had been serving as MLA since 1940 and was well known for his local work in the constituency. Having been around for so long, he was seen by many as an establishment favorite, along with being seen as a single-issue candidate when transportation matters were being discussed. In contrast, Strom had served as MLA since 1955, and his background as a farmer helped in his appointment to cabinet. Strom had taken a more reformist route to leadership, including having the backing of a younger Socred group called the Young Turks. This group wrote much of his policy positions, which included progressive stances on education and urban planning. In contrast to the party's expectations, there was little interest in the race from the general public. Turnout for candidate meetings was low, and a poll that placed Taylor in first with 9.79% support also had half of the sample say they had no opinion. On the day of the convention in Edmonton, Ryerson placed a large billboard at the front entrance, while a rock band was playing music in support of Gerhardt. As the convention was also doubling as a policy meeting, resolutions were introduced to supplement the party policy book. One such resolution proposed by the young Socreds wanted to legalize marijuana, but it was shelved by the party brass. Once the voting for the first round came to a close, Strom had obtained just shy of a majority, sitting 532 votes ahead of second place Taylor. Hook was dropped from the ballot after coming in last, and Gerhardt and Ryerson both withdrew in favor of Taylor. Once voting on the second ballot ended, Strom would be declared the winner with 915 delegates voting in his favor, 309 votes up on Taylor. Just as an aside here, this whole convention had so much going on that they didn't make the final cut of this episode, so I'll probably revisit this event for a more in-depth look. Despite electing a reformer as leader, social credit would continue to struggle without the guidance of Manning. Strom would inherit a power vacuum of sorts and struggle to make any meaningful actions, although the first environment minister in Alberta would be appointed under him. He was also not a confident public speaker, often reading directly from the drafts of pre-prepared speeches. Construction programs in the province registered a 16% investment increase during the year, and there will be a substantial carryover of work or the winter months and well into 1969. Manufacturing shipments were 5% higher than in 1967, indicating a total for the past year of $1.6 billion, double the volume of only 10 years ago. While the incidence of strikes was abnormal for Alberta, 
Unemployment during 1968 was minimal and labor income 10% higher than the previous year. This helped to show how difficult it was for Strom to effect real change. This, coupled with the changing environment around how politics was played, did not fall in the favor of social credit. This term would prove to be a major downward trend for the party fortunes on the by-election roster. The opposition progressive conservatives would win two by-elections in 1969, bumping their caucus up to eight members. One month later, Bill Dickey, MLA for Calgary Glenmore, would cross the floor from the Liberals to join the PCs and would be followed by Clarence Coppathorne, MLA for Banff Cochrane in 1971, boosting the PC caucus to 10 MLAs. Social credit was also not helped by the arrival of a new face on the federal scene. Pierre Trudeau had taken over as leader of the Liberal Party and would prove to be driven by a sole desire to harm Alberta. As the federal social credit party had moved to a dominance by Quebecers, same province that Trudeau was from, this helped to serve the provincial branch an additional struggle against the opposition PCs. Since Trudeau was incredibly unpopular in Alberta, most voters had moved to voting PC and that trend was beginning to cross provincial lines. Following the recent wins for the party, the PCs were in a very good spot heading into the election. In contrast to Strom, Peter Lougheed was young, energetic, and perfectly matched the new tone set for winning in the world of politics. Lougheed's use of the media relating to politics had set his brand, and the PCs were benefiting as a result. In 1968, Michael McCagno resigned as leader of the Liberal Party and MLA to run federally, eventually losing to the PCs. The party would hold a contest to replace him, where three candidates would stand out. John Brannigan, the mayor of Manning, John Lowry, a Calgary United Church minister, and Bob Russell, the second place candidate in the 1966 race. Lowry would beat Brannigan on the final ballot to become the party leader, but he would not last long. He would resign as leader in 1970 after a failed attempt to merge the Liberals with social credit, and Bob Russell would win on the first ballot a year later in 1971. After Dickey crossed the floor, the Liberals were left with no seats in the legislature. Following a renewal of being shut out of the legislature, Neil Reimer resigned as leader of the NDP. In the following contest, Grant Notley, the party's provincial secretary, would become leader with 51.4% of delegates supporting. Similarly to Manning, Notley enjoyed high personal approvals with Albertans. His party, however, had begun to feel the effects of being in political Siberia, and opposition to social credit began to shift away from them and coalesced around Lougheed and the PCs. Notable about this election, only four parties would contest in it, social credit, the PCs, Liberals, and the NDP. It would be the election with the fewest parties contesting since 1926, which saw the UFA, Liberals, Dominion Labour, and the Conservatives contest. And here are the results. Peter Lougheed won, leading the PCs to win 49 out of a possible 75 seats and 46.4% of the popular vote, up 43 seats and 20.4% since 1967. Next came Harry Strom, whose Social Credit Party won 25 seats and 41.1% of the popular vote, down 30 seats and 3.5% since 1967. Next came Grant Notley, whose NDP won one seat and 11.42% of the popular vote, up one seat and down 4.56% since 1967. Finally came Bob Russell, whose Liberals won zero seats and 1.01% of the popular vote, down three seats and 9.8% since 1967. With the victory of the PCs, the era of social credit dominance had officially come to an end. It would be the first election since 1917 where the winning party would share a name with a party that had held government at the federal level. This election also marks just the third time in Albertan history where the government changed hands. This would also be the best result of the PCs since 1917 where Edward Missioner led the party to 19 seats, 41.8%, and official opposition status. In a twist of fate, the first past the post system that Manning had implemented would come back to bite Strom, as a number of ridings would only be decided by less than a couple hundred votes. The NDP would see a breakthrough, as this would be the first general election since 1955 in which the party would win a seat. Oppositely, the Liberals would find themselves shut out of the legislature for the first time in its history, following the worst popular vote showing since 1940, where the party won 0.9%. This election would signal the start of the PC dynasty and leave social credit as the longest lasting political party dynasty in Canada as of 1971. I'll see you in the next one.